Okay, today I'm going to start and try to finish this gut hook knife. Now, uh, it's going to be, it looks like it's pretty well complete. Almost is, almost. Okay, got to do a little bit refining on the tip right here. It's a little rounded up here, which is no problem. I can just pull it down right there. And uh, it needs to be sharpened. So, when I, as I come down, I'll come down with this right here on top. Always take the top down, not the bottom up. Top down. And uh, it ensures that your point's good and strong and you can do it without damaging or cutting your dang finger off playing with the tip of this thing. Now it's, it's not sharp, not at all. And I've got a little, I don't know if you can see it in there, but there's a little gold toning right there. And right there, it's from the brass pins. When I put it in the, uh, when I stuck it down in there and wiped it around there just to add a little more to it, uh, a little more gray to it, and then uh, try to enhance the hamon a little bit. So now, the tip's got to be done. It's got to be sharpened, and that includes the gut hook. The gut hook's got to be sharpened. It's dull as a fro right now. I actually, to get most of the the big heavy file marks out of it, I put it on the uh, on the buffer right there. That's the reason I went ahead and, and redone this and just wiped it in there a couple of times was to to darken this back up because I buffed it and it pulled all the the color off of it which will do and then I'll have to go before I put it up I have to I need to buff these uh, wheels right are the pins need to buff the back handle the underneath handle and the butt plate got to put it on I've cupped it out or just a little bit so it'll hold epoxy and I can put two pins in there the same as in the front I just put one on each side instead of top and bottom there. So I think it makes it a little, look a little interesting. I mean, they're not perfect up and down, but that's all right. They wasn't intended to be because I'll never get them perfect. I mean, I'm not. I'm just. Hey, I'm doing this with hand tools. Everything with hand tools. So. No great big power equipment and everything, no DROs on, on milling machines or lays or, or power hammers, you know. Uh, looking forward though to maybe making me a press one day and maybe make me even make me a tube of 72 now that I got the ability to weld. If steel will ever come down, God, the day structural steel is so expensive now plate that used to cost five dollars is now thirty five dollars uh, uh, big all I've seen all right here uh, if you seen me if you followed my Instagram I posted where I was etching uh, brass okay I've got it etched now the pink stuff is fingernail polish and uh, the black stuff is epoxy. I've etched out a set of ant uh, white tail antlers on the back of this and I filled it in with black epoxy. I'm going to sand all of this off so it's going to take a while. I'm not going to cut it or anything. I'm just going to take it and remove it with a with sandpaper so let me get on it and I'll come back when I get it done okay <clears throat> excuse me uh, this heat and pollen or whatever it is has got me all stopped up and so here's what I etched for the set of mule deer ant or this white tail antler or something and you can get crazy with them. You can make them. There's no right way, no wrong way to make a set of etch a set of antlers. 
I mean, nature does whatever it wants to do. There's no set pattern to it. The ones that we consider the best of the best are a match set of antlers side to side, but that's not the way my, uh, nature plays it all the time. So, so however you want to do them are just fine. Right there. Now this is the hilt, or the pommel end of it, and so this is be outside there facing the user. Now, while I was doing that, and well, I made two silicone bronze nails, three quarters of an inch long. Get the end a slight taper on it and so that's what i'm gonna i mean other than epoxy uh, this is what i'm going to do to mechanically fasten them onto it it will have two on each side in in the front it'll only have one on each side in the back so that's it it's really nice in your hand. I like it. And uh, so that's what's next on the agenda. I've got to super glue and get it right here before I do anything else. I gotta make sure that the antler is turned up just right, everything just right before I commit to drilling holes in it. Cause once I do, I'm done unless I want to do it again and uh, as long as that took the etch it's, brass is really slow about etching but anyway I got it I don't want to do it again but I will if I have to but let's hope not so I'm gonna get this clamped up here and get it started on it here in just a second and when I get it uh, clamped up and get ready to go I'll bring the camera back Okay, I got it clamped up and ready to go. I built my holes. I added some extras. Got my uh, epoxy spreader mixer, and I've got my die ready to go. Just don't have my epoxy ready yet. All right, I hand sanded and taped this. Got it up to 400. Don't like buffing the end of it, especially around the. Uh, the epoxy because the buffer will pull it out of it. That should be plenty. If it's not, I know how to do it again. Okay. Yeah, that looks like plenty out right there. That's more than a plenty up there. It's all right. Red. There's a red pigment weak in this epoxy. I don't know. I really don't. I would assume that it would, some. But uh, all of the leftovers after this, uh, doing this, but the more than what I use, they actually still will break on this, like this mixing pad I got right here. Just just need a little pasteboard here. Okay, that's probably enough to do the whole thing, but now forcing it down in here so it will have some strength. I 
took a handle off of the knife yesterday and I was surprised at how how little the epoxy had penetrated on the end of your holes that you uh, put your your lightning holes and everything and so all right now put epoxy down these nail holes and I have let, squared the one side of them off flattened them so they have a an air escape Now I'm just trying to kind of filling up the holes as I go. It's not real deep, so it they'll go right back. Okay. That is it. Back butter just a little bit. And I'll take the handle up. Well, you can see that. So. Okay. Tap these home. Now, let's see if the okay, here it is. All clamped up. I'll give us a little. I know it's going to pull on into it up here, but I'm going to give it just a little bit of a chance. So now, tomorrow, this is dry. Yep, so it's easing right on in there. Put this pad in there just because it's on such a slope I wanted to get even pressure over the whole thing so instead of having the ridge around the hole holding it put that on there and it transfers weight all over it so that'll be nice and tight tomorrow the nails is in it and good morning uh, today let's finish up this gut hook skinner here so Yesterday, where I left off, I, I put it in the squeeze of magic 3000. So, this morning I'm going to take it out. And so, I really got to make some knobs for these things. Spinning them by hand, my finger just gets old. Okay, there it is.
out of it. Let's see what this done for it. Silicon bronze pens look pretty good with it. I think so. Yep, and I'll just leave them like they are. Got to do the brass, but anyway, let's take this off. Okay, as promised, I got it ready for the buffer. So, got the blade taped up. I hand sanded it again, not to, just not the uh, ferric chloride off of it. And just took it from gray to silver, up to a 400 grit. Not a super glossy 400, just good satin. So now I'm gonna get started on the buffer. Now, let's see. <laughs> Okay, there's the handle buffed. Uh, I've got to fix it and get it ready to go back in the ferric chloride. So let me clean this handle and, re and tape it off and everything. Then I'll be able to stick a blade back down in there. I'll be back in a minute. Now. Okay, I'm sorry. I was concentrating here and I was working here. I'm sorry. Okay. This is dull. This is dull right here. Here's a piece of paper. It's got some 
scribbles on it and a piece of paper. So, all right. See, I do that every, every just not every time, but just dang near all of them want to uh, fall off in these little ridges to here. Blending is still yet. I didn't know that when looking down at it like that, that, that had a term. It's nice jargon, but it does. It's called glinting. I didn't know that until I started, until I started kind of watching Forged in Fire. There's higher on it, so you widen this back out. Uh, let me just reset the whole camera. Okay, let's get back on it here. Get that secondary bevel in here. Put a few drops more of that fluid. Helps keep this the grit clean. to start with so that's the reason it's taking so long but that's okay I 
the 300 grit side. Not yet on the tip. Back here. Oh, it's scary. Yep. So. Okay, I'm off camera. From here up, it needs a little work. Here back, it's sharp. And that one's out. Felt nice. From here up, so I moved the moved the edge up a half inch or so, three quarters so. Get that secondary belt established. Get it in there. Okay. But I'm not done with it. It can be sharper. Always. Always. Floats all the nasty out of it. Look, a hairy, a hairy knife blade. Wonder how that happened. Now, 
this edge has got just a little bit of a bite to it. Means it when you do it. That it will just as me do. This is no real super test. But it will cut and it will do good. Now now before I scrape I scrape some steel with it. And run it up and down my anvil, my little anvil here on the on my uh vise and watch the edge roll so I know all that's good. So now I want this thing to have just a certain amount of tug on it. I don't think so. Okay. Oh. Alright, now. Time for some of the most important stuff you can do to a knife. This knife is being clamped into this piece of leather here on several different occasions today included. There is absolutely nothing on this except whatever's on it. I mean his hand, sweat, the rubbings on the blade and everything else that, where I held it or held it with a handle by the handle wrapped up in a spice. So I never ever 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 put any rubbing compound on this. I don't. People do, people swear by it. The green chromium uh, paste that, that, that the barbers used to use, I don't know if they still do or not. I don't know if they even do a straight shave anymore. And uh, you probably have to go to a specialty barber shop for that anymore. But uh, they have a big leather strop right there. They put a little bit on it and they, they strop it. Now there's two schools of a stropping. I don't agree with one of them and it's okay because we can, we're all adults here, we can agree to disagree. Now, some scoop of thought is that you take this and you just lay it flat and just bring it and don't do nothing to it. Just like this, just flat. Just let it rub the edge of it, or let it rub the sides of it. Well, that's not what strapping a stropping is supposed to do. Stropping is supposed to to, make, to take some of the teeth off of this edge right here. So some want to go less than the, than the secondary angle bevel. And some, like me, I like to go just a little bit more. If there's a wire edge on there, it will get rid of it. Now, am I right? Probably not. Is the other people right? Probably not too. So, one of us is, can be right or wrong or it don't matter. There's just two schools of it. I like rubbing the edge a little bit in case you've got a a, a burr on it. That's what the barbers do. They hold that thing up and like that. When a when a straight razor is nearly zero degrees. Oh, that's so scary. I mean, it's just one hair at a time. Yep. And I ain't putting no stress on it. None. Okay. Okay, that's where I'm going to stop. Right there. It'll take ten minutes, maybe. For my absolute 
100% dull knife to one that will absolutely shave you anywhere you want to be shaved at, I believe. So, now, this almost closes the book on this, this knife. Almost. Now, uh, how about shined up there, did that polished around the edges, a little bit of uh, of satin in the middle, or make them pop, make them draw your eye to it. And there's black epoxy, or I put made the epoxy black when I very deepenly done uh, etched that. Now, it's got silicone bronze pins to hold it on there. So, there it is. Dog pile. Okay. That. Now, I'm going to take this right here. Now you can use any kind of oil you want to. Just a real good a gun oil, machine oil, anything like that. Mineral oil. Because this is a high carbon steel knife. I don't believe that I'm going to be doing any stainless any time in my lifetime. So put it all your transitions. And there you go. Mom's there. Okay, so it's my battery's out. I, I need to change. Okay, so Darian ends the saga of the good hook knife. Right there. Nice overall. Nice. Feels good in your hand. And a nice leather sheath for it. So the only thing I've got to do left to do is uh, box it up and I will be done with this one and we will get back onto one of the buoys. Uh, get started on it and while I'm doing specific tasks around there I'm waiting on everything to go and do then I will start working on some of the little skinny knives well like I said this is it on on the gut hook skinner and uh, so till next time I suppose you'll say God bless